my name is Jodie Turvey and I'm the clinical nurse consultant for telehealth services for the South West Hospital Health Service and today I'm going to give you a bit of an insight as to what telehealth looks like in our part of the world. So the South West Hospital and Health Service is an innovative and diverse rural and remote region. It expands over nearly 320,000 kilometre, square kilometres which is about 21% of the state of Queensland. It has an estimated population of just over 26,000 and it is home to a diverse rural, uh, diverse agricultural industry ranging from cropping areas such as grains, cotton, grapes. Um, we have grazier areas, for, so we have sheep and cattle. And it has a large mining industry and tourism industry as well. Roma is our largest town with a population of just over 7,600, um, which fluctuates quite significantly due to the mining industry. Um, as you can see in the southwest, we have 11 hospitals, including eight MPHSs, um, four outpatient clinics, two residential aged care facilities, two community health centres, and eight medical practices, which is now run by Southwest as well. So we work off a hub and spoke model, with um, Roma, St George, and Charleville being our hubs and our spoke sites that you can see on the map there, feeding off each of them. So telehealth was first introduced by the South West in the 2005-2006 financial year, um, where a total of 64 clinical consultations were for non-admitted patients. So that was between five and six consults per month. And at the time, consultations were very ad hoc and the services that were provided were of much lesser scope than we have today. Um, progressively over time, it has continued to grow with um, 2,044 consultations provided last financial year. So we went from having about five to six a month to about 170 a month now. So what have we done over the years to continue to grow telehealth in the southwest and what valuable lessons have we learnt along the way? So because we're talking about telehealth in the bush or a rural Queensland perspective, I'm going to give you a theme um, that will be comparing the establishment of telehealth services to growing a crop. Just something different for you guys today. Um, so the picture you can see is my family's farm this year um, and as you can see this is a beautiful vibrant crop um, which is similar to how the telehealth services are shaping up in the southwest. Um, so telehealth in the southwest could not have continued to grow and progress without the establishment of a dedicated workforce. When I commenced in the role of CNC for telehealth I was the only contact for the southwest. So basically I was the farmer with a bit of seed, with no planting rig or a tractor with this beautiful vi viable land with, to plant a crop. One of the first things that I tackled when I got into this job was developing a sustainable telehealth model. Previous to working in this position, I was employed in um, the emergency department at Roma, and at, the, at that stage, the responsibility to support um, non-admitted telehealth consultations fell on the NUM of ED, or one of the nurses working in, on shift on that particular day, and there's only two nurses that work in ED at a time. At, yeah, at times. Um, so with the unpredictability of ED, it wasn't a sustainable model. Um, so I understood the current environment. At times, it would be stressful for staff. It wasn't always supportive for patients and it would often be frustrating for the clinici clinicians providing the service. I knew that we couldn't grow our services without, without having the um, capacity to support them. You can't plant a crop without having the means to do so. Fortunately, we received some funding and I also briefed up to the executive management team several times, um, so I've become an expert at that. Um, through the consultation, um, we established three clinical nurse positions which were created, so one in each hub site. So with the additional three clinical nurses, this meant that we had the gear ready to go and plan our crop. Within the first 12 months of the newly established positions, we saw a 130% increase in Roma. St George, we had a 179% sorry, percent increase, and Charleville, 144% increase. And I can't pay enough credit to the clinical nurses. Um, they've been such a great working force behind telehealth in the southwest, and they've contributed so much towards bringing telehealth to where it is today. In our spoke sites, I've been fortunate enough to develop good relationships um, with clinicians and administrative staff, which have led to champions of telehealth um, in those areas, and they've they too have contributed to our successes. If I have clinical nurses on the ground, they have the insight into the daily functions and they can see where telehealth can be, impl be implemented to support existing services and provide new ones. The combination of having the on the ground knowledge and also myself at the governance level has proven to work well. 
So examples of this is our pre-admission clinics for patients that have procedures within our hub sites. Previously, patients were required to present to the operating site to have a face-to-face -face consultation for their PAC or to go to their local GP. And to th many, this may not sound um, very significant or inconvenient, but if you think of a patient that lives at Eramanga, so that's an hour west of Coolby, it would be a six-hour round road trip for to this patient to have a consultation in Charleville, which is their nearest hub site. Now patients can have this consultation at their nearest southwest facility, which would, in this instance would be Quilpie. So that's knocked off four hours road trip. Patients have stated that they feel as though they have less anxiety about having their procedure and feel better prepared um, and have the convenience of having this done in their hometown. Another example is at St George. Um, one of the SMOs visits Bolin on a weekly basis to provide a um, GP clinic. So Bolin is a um, community clinic we have there. And on one occasion, the clinic was going to be scheduled due to unforeseen for circumstances. So our medical officer was on obstetrics call, so there must have been sick, sick leave by another medical officer. So it meant that the clinic was going to be cancelled. Um, so the clinical nurse who works on the ground there um, saw it as an opportunity for the medical officer to do telehealth um, with our patients there and with the experience of a, a very experienced director of nursing at the other end at Bolland to support. Um, and anything that couldn't be assessed via telehealth could be rescheduled or they could come into St George. Um, so that's another example of innovative use of telehealth on the ground. Also another example is um, with our clinical nurse, she had a patient that was a child that was being reviewed for um, having seizures and the, the types of seizures had changed. So the clinical nurse having that experience knowledge of the equipment um, was able to, the mother had actually recorded on her iPhone, so they were able to use the Apple device cord um, to demonstrate, to show what the recording was of the changes in the seizure and, and the provider found that really interesting. So having that on the ground knowledge at the time is, has been really beneficial in our, in our HHS. Um, yeah, that's something. <laughs> um, so to grow a crop, it generally requires a good relationship with your agronomist. Your agronomist needs to have an understanding of the crop and that you're, um, what you're growing and what's required in order to achieve the successful crop. So establishing relationships and networking is one of the most important factors when establishing telehealth services. For Southwest patients to receive medical specialist outpatient service, this generally means hopping in a car and driving to Toowoomba or Brisbane, depending on the location of the specialist. One of the major challenges for the Southwest is that this is a change management process and the consultation that's required is quite extensive to enable um, medical specialist services to provide telehealth. Um, for services that have been identified as appropriate for, for telehealth, there's significant consultation that's required. This is predominantly due to most medical specialist services being outside our HHS, um, and it's often challenging to get those vital key stakeholders in the room to discuss um, and also to understand the importance and the significant positive impact that providing telehealth could have on individuals and communities or rural and remote healthcare settings. It's like an agronomist trying to assess a crop without having seen it. It's important to remember that the recipient perspective, um, from the recipient perspective, we need to provide a clear and accurate description and site visits are one of these ways that we can achieve that. Um, you can also use your contacts. Learn what strategy works out best um, when starting that conversation with people. Get some inside information. Some people like stats, graphs, data. Some people like formal presentations. Some people like to sit down for a chat. So take the time to develop your relationship and use your networks to achieve that. Um, following on from this, we need to understand our clinical needs and priorities. Growing a good crop isn't just about having the farmer, the planning equipment and the agronomist. It's about understanding what type of farming or cropping is best suited and what the potential um, impacts on the life of the crop and what's needed for a successful outcome. Having a good understanding of your environment is paramount. And the same goes when establishing telehealth services. I believe that you need to understand your patients and your communities. And from a service delivery and planning view, this can be done by looking at stats, trends, patient travel and referrals. But as a nurse, I value the importance of consumer engagement. Get out there into your community and understand their views. What are they having challenges with? How healthcare needs are impacting their life and what can we do to make it better? Can telehealth help? For example, we're currently looking to services um, that can reduce the amount of travel for patients um, required to go away for the treatment of cancer. 
At times, patients were required to actually relocate for several weeks and travel back and forth on a regular basis. So when engaging with people, they tell us that this is physically exhausting for them. They're some of our most sickest patients that have to requ require to travel so much. And by looking at stats, we know that one in three patients are going to suffer from cancer in their lifetime. And we know, also by looking at stats, that in 2015 there was 401 um, oncology consultations just for public patients, just from the southwest, just to Toowoomba Hospital last year. So what can we do to make that better? So we need to understand from our end what we need, but we also need to understand what the challenges are and the clinical priorities are at the provider's end as well, because that's going to impact our service. Um, so plein air crop takes some time and preparation and significant changes need to occur before you'll see some results. Um, so you can't grow a crop if there hasn't been any rain. If the rain hasn't visited, then there won't be moisture in the soil to grow. And I strongly believe that you need to be a familiar face. Go to facilities and provide some face-to-face -face support and build a rapport. And like rain, you need to not leave it too long before your next visit. So a combination of these factors has meant that um, in the southwest we have started to reap the benefits. These include, but are not limited to, reduced travel, patients being treated locally, upskilling of staff. For example, we now have five clinical nurses throughout the southwest trained in joint count assessment to support rheumatology telehealth. Um, we received some of our telehealth incentive monies from our increased growth, which meant we can pur we've purchased peripheral devices. So all our facilities have digital um, dermatoscopes and otoscopes. And now we've enabled all our, um, well, nearly all of our medical practices that we run to be telehealth enabled, and we've done some training with staff. For us, telehealth is simply considered a mode of delivery, delivery and should be incorporated into the provision of healthcare on a daily basis. Although telehealth is progressively becoming an integral path, part of healthcare in the bush, we're still faced with many challenges. As you see in the farming industry, um, many setbacks can occur. And, but the futures and possibilities of telehealth looks promising. So take the gamble, plant the seed. Invest, take the time to nurture and develop it and be prepared for setbacks. But eventually, you too can reap the benefits. So that's it. <laughs>